<laughs> Tampa Bay I Buccaneers. Good. I thought I was good too. I, know, I tried to lay out. I've been gotta, talking we too talk much. We got to talk about the Bucs now, man. We got to move on to the NFC South. Getting some grades, looking at some draft picks. OJ Howard. Uh, boy, a lot of great tight ends in this draft, Bucky. But uh, as you look at the rest of their board, he stands out. And like you said, uh, if you follow that Warren Buffett uh, mantra, buy it from established companies. Hold on. I mean, just hold on. This is a nice thing. But if I'm talking about Warren Buffett if we're thinking about fantasy football I would buy Jameis Winston right now because this offense is absolutely loaded this guy in the middle of the field Deshaun Jackson on the outside Mike Evans on the other side Cameron Brait doing some dirty work they have everything that you need have a running back in Doug Martin who appears to be motivated this is a guy who I talked about being a solar system player meaning he is the one that everything revolves around in this offense, he's going to be terrific. I love what Tampa Bay is doing. But you brought up Cameron Braid. His numbers last year, 57 catches, 660 yards, and eight touchdowns. And then you go grab a guy that uh, plays the same position. But what's the, what's the narrative there? Well, there's a lot here. You know, I love it when Sheck goes into the uniform talk. I mean, that could, no, I really get in on that. And the Bucs, uh, they have traditionally disappointed me with these pewter things. But not anymore because I think we're going to be seeing that pewter uniform in the postseason, in January, I think this team makes the playoffs, and I think that this pick of O.J. Howard is going to be a big reason why. The fact that Cameron Braid is there doesn't bother me at all. Fine, you play two tights. You got Deshaun Jackson on the outside. I, I mean, Mike Evans has caught 238 balls mm -hmm. the last three mm -hmm. years, and Jameis Winston, as long as Winston doesn't go down. Of course, we could say that about a lot of starting quarterbacks. Right. They go down, but I wish they had a more experienced backup behind them. Let's talk about surprises, though, Bucky, with this team, because I think a lot of people were surprised at how well they played last year. Sneaky mm -hmm. good, knocking on the door of the playoffs when the season was all said and done. Can Chris Goodwin, uh, Godwin help them make the leap? He can help them. And it's interesting, after hearing Jason Light talk about why they wanted to go and get Chris Godwin, they felt like they wanted another guy that could replace Vincent Jackson. You talk about having a basketball team on the outside, big <clears throat> guys that can go and play alley-oop down in the red zone. All of those guys are capable, so... When I look at this team and trying to figure out how to match up with them in the red zone, who are you trying to, to, to stop? Vincent Jackson, O.J. Howard, Deshaun Jackson. I mean, I mean, so many guys available. This is a terrific team on the perimeter. Jameis Winston has to be excited about being able to throw the ball all over the yard. I mean, there are a lot of weapons at his disposal. Is he going to be excited about the uh, draft grade you're about to give him? I mean, he may not be excited about the grade because I give him a B, but, you know, it's not about grades. It's about the experience sometimes in school. This is a, you know, draft grade show. I know, but it's, sometimes it's about the experience. Hey, people are wondering why the Bucks didn't take a running back. I can tell you that, given the question marks around. They took one, Jeremy around, McNichols. Yeah, wait, late. The fifth line. Jordan Howard. What round did Jordan Howard go? Uh, not Okay, high. fourth. Fifth. I thought Jordan Howard went fifth. fifth. Second leading rush, you get a running back anybody. Anybody can play running back. <laughs> That's another topic for another show. Let's Bucks, talk about Bucks the Atlanta the Falcons, playoffs, shall we? I like their Moving on to or not. their picks. I like Tampa Bay to win this division, by the way. Yep. Uh, See, how about Tack around. McKinley with maybe one of the moments of the draft next to Drew Pearson's uh, uh, fun uh, shout out to the Philadelphia Eagles fans. Thanking them for and, their career. And Bucky, as you look down the rest of that list, though, that name at the top is the guy that you think uh, could really wreak havoc on that defense. Tag McKinley, man, I can't do it like he's dedicated to his grandma. My grandma would tell me to put some soap in my mouth if I use those kind of words. But <laughs> yep. what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try and keep it clean. Tag McKinley is a high motor player. You get an opportunity to pair him opposite Vic Beasley. You now have two Energizer bunnies coming off the edge. We saw Beasley get 15 and a half sacks, six forced fumbles a year ago. Now you get a guy that is almost like a clone in terms of his motor and relentless energy. I believe they're going to knock people around from the edges. This team is an outstanding team. I know they kind of frittered away the Super Bowl, but I expect them to make a major run again. This is an outstanding team. I mean, I'm thinking, is it Palmolive? Is it Lava Soap? Because that's the worst, by the way, when no, you get I, washed I, out with the Lava Soap. Not really warm for gritty. the sponsors, but sometimes the, the, the ivory. Just, ugh. Ugh. My grandmother had all these old Street and Smiths magazines. I remember reading about the Falcons in the 70s, the Grits Blitz, getting after the quarterback. Buddy Curry. And yeah, Buddy Curry. That's what they're going to be doing with Tack McKinley. Don't forget, they also signed Jack Crawford in free agency. I like this pick. And this was a problem for Atlanta. Yeah, Vic Beasley had a lot of sacks, but in the postseason, not enough there. Not enough from the edges. They got it in the Super Bowl up the middle, but not from the edges. They need more pass rush. They got it. Yeah, a little misleading uh, for them. 25th in yards per game mm -hmm. allowed last year, but also you look at that high-powered offense, so teams well, playing behind. A lot of, lot, lot of yards of just in those games in general. Overall defense uh, need, though, 
surprise, Bucky, after we move on from Tack McKinley. Now, I would be surprised if the Atlanta Falcons don't wear their red helmets like they did with the oh, Grizz Blitz. Would be sweet. I would love to see them go old school with the gray face mask. I know I'm not privy on being on the uniform thing with Shemeshek and Harrison, but I have opinions on yeah. uniforms, and I like that uniform for the Falcons as they move into their new deal. Brian Hill is a guy that I think needs to contribute. Big running back that can go downhill. I know Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman, those guys are nice running backs. This is a guy that you can throw into the rotation. He should be physical, effective. Steve Sarkeesian is going to keep that offense intact. It's still about Matt Ryan. You still need some more running backs. You mentioned those guys ahead of him, though. It's a log jam of running backs. It's back. tough. It, it is. I mean, you know, they've got a lot of talent there already. That's a big reason why they made it to the Super Bowl. I like the Falcons draft. I like that they did a little bit in free agency, but not much. No team other than maybe the Cowboys with Zeke and Dak knocked it out of the park in last year's draft mm. more than Atlanta did. So I trust what they're doing there. I think they win the division with this draft class. Tampa Bay, wild card. Well, that does underscore the fact that we really know down the road how good this draft was. But how good was it today? Oh, I give it a B. I give it a nice, solid, solid effort. Mm -hmm. I like the picks. I like where they fit. I like where they let us out. I thought Falcons this was going. a participation award. That's what that you told Mark. It's nice and solid. They participated nice and solid. in the draft. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. They, they, they hit it. Hey, another team that participated, the Carolina Panthers. And at the top of the board for them, for the uh, Swiss Army knife, that is Christian McCaffrey. It's interesting just to break him down. We will in just a second. You see Corn Elder on the list as well. Uh, Taylor Moton, the offensive guard in the second uh, round. But really, it, it kind of starts and ends with Christian McCaffrey. If he is the home run, they hope he can be Bucky. Uh, this could be a spectacular haul for them. You know, the way it was told to me, he is going to be the Luke Keekley of their offense. This is a triple threat player guy as a runner, receiver, returner, can make big plays happen. They are looking to change their identity on offense. They're trying to make it really a little more friendly for Cam. As they said, Mike Shula and his presser said that we want Cam to be able to play like Tom Brady. Throw it to the backs and let those guys do the work. Christian McCaffrey certainly can do that. I worry about the fit sometimes coming downhill. Can he handle a big workload? But his ability to catch the ball in space, he's kind of reminiscent of the classic Brian Westbrook. If you think about Brian Westbrook doing his prime in Philadelphia, I believe that's what Christian McCaffrey is. But that's that. the question, though. Who, who is he? What's his comp? Because he, he did have a high volume. Uh, a lot of people want to say that uh, you compare him to guys like Westbrook, as you said, or LaShawn McCoy as well. Uh, Reggie Bush, he was a between-the-tackles guy sometime. He, he's really, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly who he'll be. Well, he may be his own unique player. I love the fact that Bucky just compared a black running back and a white running It's okay. It's okay for us to oh, compare oh, okay. different players like that. And, and with Christian McCaffrey, the reason I say that is so much is made that this is a white running back but the other thing that's made about him is can he handle a workload if Jonathan Stewart goes down Bucky he did it a lot at Stanford what do you think of that uh, critique that well can he be a 20 carry guy in the NFL you know I worry about the size and I worry about the fact that he didn't really break a lot of tackles like yards after contact is not really his forte what he does is he wins with elusiveness he's slippery in the hole but here's why I like the surprise pick because they double down with Curtis Samuel Curtis mm -hmm. Samuel at Ohio State basically did what Christian McCaffrey did at Stanford. These are two hybrid players, triple threat players. So now you have two and rebuilding this offense. And they talked about the Patriots model and Tom Brady. Well, when you look at them, like the Patriots have been able to try out Deion Lewis and James White and so many other guys that were kind of like and similar in their approach. Well, Curtis Samuel and Christian McCaffrey now give them two. The only question I have about the Carolina Panthers, you didn't change the play calling. You didn't change the play design. So is Mike Shula capable of taking these two pieces and finding a way to make them effective? He's never done it throughout his history as a play caller in the National Football League. It's on him to figure out a way to do it. And finally, Cam Newton isn't necessarily a check down quarterback. Mm -hmm. He likes to throw it down the field. Yep. Is he patient and disciplined enough to say, hey, I'm going to dink it out to my running backs and let them do work? He's never shown that ability. Yeah, a touch quarterback is not what you think of when you think of Cam Newton. But when you think of this draft, what grade do you give him? I'll give him a B+. Plus. The Carolina Panthers' offense is back on track. Those running backs make them dynamic, make them diverse. They still don't have the speed demon that I want on the outside in the passing game, but if you're going to check it down and play small ball, these guys are terrific. You can get two better guys than Samuel and McCaffrey. Well, maybe they should just bring Jericho Cotri back. I, I, like the, I like this pick also, we're talking about McCaffrey, because Jonathan Stewart, it reduces his workload and could make him more effective as he gets older in the NFL. Yeah, addition by subtraction in uh, mm -hmm. that workload potentially – here it is, final card of our show. It's the Saints. Let's go to New Orleans and take a look at their draft picks. Uh, certainly when you pick up an Adrian Peterson in the offseason, it does change your needs a little bit. They did take Alvin Kamara, the running back 
coming out of Tennessee in the third round. But uh, you're going to the top of the board, Bucky, for your best pick in New Orleans. Marshawn Lattimore, they needed a lockdown corner. They needed the number one corner to play in this division. Marshawn Lattimore is a guy that I call the natural. Smooth, fluid, polished, outstanding instincts and awareness. Has all the movement skills and physical traits that you look for. Big thing for him is going to be his injury history. Can he overcome the hamstring issues that has plagued his college career? If he can, should be a number one player. Should be a Pro Bowl player on the island. They're going to get tested because this is a defense that continues to give up big plays. He's going to have to be a guy that can be an answer, a solution. I mean, it would have been great if they could have drafted a lot more Lattimores because this is a team dead last in yards per game allowed, 29th in passer rating allowed, tied for 27th in interceptions. They need help. Yeah, I, I agree. But, you know, you look at those numbers, Mark, they were worse the year before. The year before, they gave up 45 touchdown passes. 45! That's insane. So I love this pick. It fills a need. Talented guy. I mean, the, the Saints know they need to build the defense. They've been trying. They drafted Sheldon Rankins with their first pick last year. I like the pick. Surprise pick, Bucky. Who was uh, out of left field for you, maybe? You know, Ryan Ramchick was a bit of a surprise. Bottom of first round. You talk about that value. So basically, you swap Ryan Cooks for Ryan Ramchick. Uh, I think you took a bit of a hit. But I understand why. Andrews Pete was a disappointment on the outside. They're trying to make sure that they can run the football. All the additions that they made to the backfield, all dependent upon their front line's ability to control the trenches. When you look at this backfield, Mark Ingram, Adrian Peterson, Alvin Kamar, who's going to be a star in the league, they want to get back to the formula in 2009 where they had a three-headed monster being able to do a bunch of different things in the backfield, running the football and putting guys in specific roles. Ramchick helps. They have a lot of people. We'll see how Sean Payton puts this together. I, I'm, as a football fan, just excited to see how their running game looks because obviously when you think of the Saints, you think of the passing game. But if they can run the football well, then they could be a dark horse in this uh, in this uh, division as well. Overall, though, the grade, Bucky? I'm going to give them a B. They get a participation trophy. It's a solid effort. Let's see what it looks like on the field. All right. Yeah, the one thing about Ramchicks, too, is that they're going to have him for a while. Brandon Cooks may just be a rental for the Patriots because of having to re-sign him. I like the philosophical change to play defense and run the football in New Orleans, or at least try to. You All think right. Drew Brees will go along with that? <laughs> we'll find you're your fantasy we'll guy. Win. They got to throw some 5,000 yards. You think when he gets to play call in this year, he's so like, hey, he let's run it. So maybe goes for 4,300, negative Nancy. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. You think he's going to be pleased with that? You know, I'm like, that's the question. You know, don't is, change is, when you get really older. Gonna you know, just, just the rock you off had me long. with the McCaffrey Westbrook comparison. Now you just ruined it. With, uh, <laughs> Great. Drew Brees. We'll yeah. finish this off camera. In the meantime, you can uh, go off camera to NFL.com and see all of Bucky's draft grades for all 32 teams. You can see all of our draft grade videos as well on NFL.com and on YouTube. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll continue this in the grade room. This has been NFL Now's Draft Grade Lives presented by Bud Light.